In this video, we're going to learn about the if-defined and if-not-defined preprocessor directives in C. So these directives are used for conditional compilation. We can include or not include pieces of code in our source code based on whether or not some macro has been defined or not defined. You might be familiar with the preprocessor from using the define statement to create constants. So for example, if we say number define buffer size 100, so define here is what's called a preprocessor directive, and we're using it to define a macro called buffer size. When our program is compiled, there's going to be a text substitution operation that's going to take place in the first phase of the compilation of our program, called the preprocessing phase. Any occurrence of buffer size will be replaced with a text 100. So for example, if we say printf, and we output buffer size here, with %d backslash n, and we output buffer size. If we save this compiler program and then run it, we'll get a buffer size of 100. Now, what's important to understand about the preprocessor is it's going to manipulate our source code before the source code is actually compiled. It's preprocessing the source code. We can actually see the effect of the preprocessor by using the dash e option. So when we compile our program, we're going to use dash e. After we use this option, if we open up the D file produced by the compiler, we can see what the source code looks like after the preprocessor has run. And we can see that buffer size was replaced with the text 100. So the preprocessor can manipulate the source code of our program just before it's compiled into an executable program. So the if defined preprocessor directive is another preprocessor directive that allows us to include text in our source code if a macro has been defined. So for example, we could say here, number sign, if defined, and we'll say debug mode. Then we'll have number sign and if. And in here, we'll do a printf. We'll say printf, debug mode, exclamation mark, backslash n. We'll save this. Right now, we don't have a macro called debug mode defined. So if we compile the program, and then we run it, all we'll get is buffer size 100. But if we define a macro called debug mode, then this if defined will be true and we will print out debug mode. So we'll save this, compile our program and run it. And now we get debug mode output. And again, if we run the compiler with the dash E option, we can see what the source code is going to look like after the preprocessor has been run. So in this case here, we can see the printf debug mode text was inserted into the source code because this if def was true. Now there's also an if not defined directive. So we could say here, if not defined debug mode and if, and in here we could output not debug mode, exclamation mark, with a new line. If we save this, compile our program, and run it, in this case, we'll just get debug mode because debug mode is defined. If we take this out with a comment here, save it, compile our program, and run it again, now we get not debug mode. And the reason why this printf text is being inserted into our source code by the preprocessor is because debug mode is not defined now. And that's because I took out this define directive with a comment here. If we save this, compile our program, and run it, we get debug mode in the program output because the debug mode macro is defined again. We can actually undefine a macro with the undefined directive. So for example, if here I say number sign, undefine, debug mode, this will actually undefine the debug mode macro. So if we save our program, compile it and run it, now we're back to not debug mode because the debug mode macro is not defined anymore. Now there's another preprocessor directive called if, and we can actually achieve the same effect as if defined and if not defined by using if. So for example, if we say here, if, and then defined, and then in brackets, 
have debug mode. And here we say, if not defined, and then inside the brackets debug mode, this will actually do the exact same thing. So we can save this compiler program and run it. And we'll get not debug mode. If we take out this undefined debug mode directive, save it, compile a program and run it. Now we get debug mode. So there's also an else directive we can use as well. Let's actually switch it back to what we had before. Here we'll have number sign undef debug mode. We'll switch this back to if defined debug mode. And we'll switch this back to if not defined debug mode. And then we'll try adding in an else directive. So here we'll now have an else directive. And if debug mode is not defined, then we'll use this else directive to print out not debug mode two, followed by a new line. We can save this, compile our program, and run it. And now we get not debug mode two in our output because of this else directive. So we could imagine using these directives to optionally insert printf or other output statements throughout our code to help debug our program. By setting the debug mode macro, we could enable these output statements and we could then trace the execution of our program. Another thing we could do with these directives is change our source code based on the platform we're compiling our code for. So maybe we could compile our source code differently for Windows, Mac, or Windows operating systems. So for example, we could change the buffer size based on the platform. We could say, if defined Linux, set buffer size to 100. And if defined Mac, then we'll define the buffer size as 200. And then finally, if defined Windows, we'll set the buffer size to be 300, followed by end if. Now what we could do is define one of these three macros. So we could say number sign define Linux. We could then create a buffer based on the buffer size. So we could say car buffer buffer size. And this buffer will now vary in length based on how buffer size is set. And buffer size is going to be set based on which platform macro is defined. So if here we output the size of buffer, we'll get a different size depending on which platform macro is defined. So we'll say size of buffer here. We'll save this. We'll compile a program and we'll run it. And right now we'll get size of buffer is 100 because the Linux macro is defined. Let's change this to Windows now. So we'll say Windows, save this, compile a program, and run it. And now we get size of buffer is 300. So this is how we can use the if defined and if not defined preprocessor macros in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.